Hi there. Welcome to Anchors for Life. We're glad that you joined us once again. And today we are looking and we're continuing our study as we're looking at knowing what you believe. And we're in the section of knowing what you believe concerning the person and work of the Holy Spirit. And we want to talk today briefly about the work of the Spirit in new birth. And the uh, biblical term for that is regeneration. And this particular word, regeneration, is only used twice in the Bible. It's used once in Matthew chapter 19, I think it's verse 28, and it refers to uh, the millennial kingdom and the character of that kingdom in a day to come. Uh, but it's also mentioned in Titus chapter 3. And I want to read that verse in, in Titus chapter 3, verse 5. It says, But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Here is new birth. This idea of the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, indeed, this, this refers to new birth. Uh, but the concept of new birth it doesn't only begin here. The concept of new birth we find in other places, particularly in John's gospel, in John chapter 1, verses 12 to 13, is where we first uh, might get a glimpse of this idea of, of new birth or being born of God. And when we look in John chapter 1, verse 12, we read this, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, and here it is, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Born of God. And we really see both sides of salvation here. We see the human side of it, and we see God's side of it. The human side of it is in verse 12, where it says, As many as received him, to them he gave the right or authority or power to become children of of God. And God's side of it is that uh, those who believed in his name were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And so, before we jump to that, let me just uh, say this. These verses start with this little expression, but, which means that there's a contrast to be made. And he was contrasting with what we read in verses 10 and 11 to, to what we read in verse 11, uh, 12 and 13. In verses 10 and 11, he says, He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Now, then he flows right into our verses, but as many as received him to them he gave the right or authority or power to become children of god again this is man's responsibility uh man's side uh, man's responsibility and man's side of it is to believe in the lord jesus christ to believe in the gospel message and uh, in believing let me just say this too, in this idea of believing is much more than some intellectual exercise. Believing has to do uh, really uh, with uh, trusting and recognizing the Lord Jesus Christ as the only one that can fill that empty vacuum, that empty void that is there, that God-shaped void that is in the heart of every man and every woman, every boy and every girl. You see, it's, it's not, this idea of believing is much more than just simply intellectually or, or some kind of feeling or, or some kind of emotion. It's really resting. It's, it's in faith resting everything I have in my, for my eternity on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it means by believing. And, and, and when we... Uh, the, the, the interesting thing about this whole thing is that when we come to a passage like um, Ephesians chapter 2, 
For example, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, we read this. And you he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also you once conducted yourself in the lust of, of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. And so what these verses tell us is that you and I were dead in our trespasses and sins. We were dead. We could show no signs of life toward God. We had no ability uh, to, to do anything more or less, to believe anything. So how is it then that we believed? How is it that we were granted uh, the ability to believe? How, how does that happen? It's all by God's side of the work. You see, we were dead, we were helpless, we were hopeless, we were without hope, we were without God, and yet God steps in. And it's God. This manner of regeneration is all of God. And uh, when we read these, these scriptures, uh, if we were dead in our trespasses and sins, if we were dead spiritually, how can we believe? That's the question. But notice this. At the beginning of our verse, it says, and you he made alive. It was God who made us alive. We had no ability on our own. This manner of new birth, this manner of regeneration, it comes from God's side. It's God's work. It's totally of God. Now, when we think about this, uh, we connect this. You he made alive, verse, verse uh, at the very beginning, verse 1. But then in verse 4, it goes on to say, after it describes our condition, and then it gives another contrast, and it says, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, even when we were hopeless and helpless and could not do anything, more or less believe, he made us sit, uh, it says he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. He, he has to stop and put a parenthesis in there. And he says, you know, it's all by grace. It's by God's favor. It's nothing that you've done. It, 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 it's nothing of man. It's all God's work. It's all God's grace. And, and then he says this, and he's raised us up uh, together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. And then he has to re-echo this and he says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works or unto good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, as we consider these things, this is totally emphasizing the fact that this manner of regeneration is on God's side. It's all God's work. Yes, faith is involved, uh, but where did we get the the faith. Where did we get the ability to have faith? For by grace you use, you've been saved through faith. It is a gift of God. Faith in itself is a gift of God to believe. It's all God's work. It's amazing. It's, this is this is how tremendous this gospel message truly is. Now let's just go back to John one thirteen again, and let's underline this expression: to those who believe in His name who were born not of blood, nor of the will of man, sorry, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. they were born of God. You see, he mentions three things here. Not of blood. That's not of our family heritage. Uh, it doesn't matter what family you're born into physically. If you haven't been born of God, then... You're not saved. It doesn't matter. You don't become a Christian because your mother and father were a Christian. See, God doesn't have any grandchildren. And, and God only has children and sons. And, 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 and so when we consider this manner of children and sonship, uh, it, it has to be not of blood, 
So it's not our family heritage, not of the will of man, not by our own moral efforts, trying to do something, trying to be good enough to get to heaven. No, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, the Bible says. And so this man of regeneration has nothing to do with what I can do and what I bring to the table, what I add to the whole scenario. No, it's not by blood. It's not by the will of man, uh, the, the, the will of the flesh, nor is it by the will of man. Uh, it's not by what we decide. You and I have no ability, no power uh, to be born again. New birth is of God. And it is all of God. For by grace you've been saved. It is God's grace. It is God's working in the soul. And, and when we consider that, it's, it's all of God. Now, the Lord Jesus was trying to bring this home to the heart of Nicodemus. You come to the end of chapter 2. And, and what we read at the end of chapter 2 there. When, when Nicodemus is brought uh, before the Lord and Nicodemus comes to visit the Lord and he asks the Lord this question, how can a man be born when he's old? That's a tremendous question there in John chapter 3, verse 2. And, 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 he, and he says, um, and, and uh, when he asks this question, it, it's such an important question for us to consider today. And I want to begin at the end of chapter 2, in verse 23, because there, I think, uh, we find this connection where he says, uh, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, uh, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men. He knew what was in the heart of men. And then it says, and he did no, had no need that anyone should testify of him, for he knew what was in men. And at that moment, he says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, uh, come from God, for no one can do the things, the signs that you do unless God is with him. So Nicodemus comes to, to God, uh, comes to the Lord Jesus, I should say. He comes to the Lord Jesus, and as he comes to the Lord Jesus, he asks him, and he makes this statement about him, that no one, no one, he says, uh, no one can do these signs unless God is with him. And Jesus said to him, Jesus doesn't even comment. He just says to him right away in verse 3, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, what the Lord Jesus was doing, because of what we read in the end of chapter 2, that he knew the heart of man. He knew what was in man. He knew that Nicodemus was not born again. And this, what we see, maybe we could outline it this way. In chapter 2, verse 23, to chapter 3, verse 2, we have the sinner's worry, or if you will, Nicodemus's concerns. Then you have the Savior's word, verses 3 and 5. You must be born again. And then you have the Spirit's work. How it is that you and I can be born again. Now, when we carefully look at this portion, Nicodemus is never told to do anything. He's not told to do anything. He is, the statement is made several times. You must be born again. Five times in this section, we find this idea of being born again. Five times it's mentioned. And this is the key, uh, really, to this whole subject of regeneration. You must be born again. So we ask this question, what does born again mean? 
it, it actually means, literally, it means born of God or born from above. Born from above. And uh, when we consider this, this regeneration, this new birth, again, I want to underline, it is a work of God. I want to just read a couple of verses to verify this, and then we'll come back to this portion. Uh, think about 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be a new creation, old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. A new creation, born from above. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from among the dead. He has begotten us or born us again or birthed us. That's 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Romans chapter 6, verse 11 says, Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians 2, 4, which we've already read, But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. It's all of God. It's all of God. There's a portion in the book of James that I want to just draw our attention to. In James chapter 1, verses 13 to 15. Listen to it. It says, Now let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot tempt, be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted. Now listen to this. Each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Now here it is. Then when the desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin when it is full grown, brings forth death. Now, let's just contrast those verses with what we find in 17 and 18 of the same chapter. So James chapter 1, verses 17 and 18 now. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning, of his own will he has brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Now, let's just think about this passage in connection to our subject of new birth. Let's ask several questions as we consider it, starting with who. Who. Who is new birth um, for? Uh, first of all, um, where does it come from? Uh, new birth is of God. That's the who. New birth is of God. Who provides it? Who, who, who's, who uh, is the one who brings it? It is from God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there's no variation or shadow of turning we read and when we consider this uh with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning of his own will he brought forth by the word of truth now let's again let's think about this this word brought forth is the same word that's in verse 15 of james 1 where he says in verse 15 it says there that when it is um, when when the desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, brought forth and birth. Same word, same word. And so when we think about that, notice this in verse seventeen, the word above from the Father of Lights. Um, we we read uh, this this word above every good gift and every perfect gift that is from above. This word above is the same word found in John three three, where it says you must be born again. You must be born from above. Now, so this tells us that he birthed us. He birthed us. 
A few more verses. I'm not going to read them. I'm just going to give them to you so you can write them down. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 5 and 6. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. John chapter 6, verse 44. And, and again, our verse, Titus 3, 5. Now, the second question is how? How does this new birth take place? We, we see the who, it's, it's from God. It's from above. But the how is back in James chapter 1, verse 18. Chapter 1, verse 18, we read there, Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth. So I want to connect that uh, to what we have in uh, many scriptures, that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God, that we are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. That's First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. We'll come back to that again. And so we see the, the how is by the word of God. Now, let's consider one more question as we look at this. The why is so that we might be a type of first fruit. That we might be a type of first fruit for his creation. Now, let's finish up by going back to John chapter 3 in verse 4. And Nicodemus asked this same question. How? How can a man be born again when he is old? How can a man be born when he is old? Can he a second time go into his mother's womb and be born? And the Lord answered Nicodemus and said, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. And so what the Lord is saying here to Nicodemus, to this religious man, is that you need to be born again. You need to be born from above. And so when we look at this, the Lord Jesus is saying, unless you're born of water and of the Spirit. Now, the water here is not water baptism, as many people would think. Many people uh, would, would teach that it's water baptism. But it's not water baptism. It's really the Word of God. As we've already seen, uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word of God. We've already seen in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, that we're born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. And another verse that helps us tremendously with this is Ephesians 5.26 that says where the word of God there is being referred to as the sanctifying and cleansing agent, the washing of the water by the word. And so how powerful that is. And then he mentions by the Spirit. And he says, the, the wind blows where it wills. He, he mentions this in verse 8. The wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So everyone who is born of the Spirit. In other words, the, the work of God is God's work. It's God's work done by God's Spirit through God's Word because of God's grace. It's all God. Now, where does faith come in? Well, he gives us the, the grace and the faith to believe. And, and that's a tremendous thing. So you cannot separate this work of regeneration and this work of faith. It happens together. And it happens, uh, we might say, simultaneously. Uh, but we have to realize that this work is a work of God. This work of regeneration is all of God. And it's all because of the grace of God. And what a tremendous thing that he has brought us into. And Nicodemus answered and said, well, how can these things be? And the Lord Jesus said, listen, you're the, you're the teacher of Israel. Nicodemus was the top teacher. And he says, and you don't understand these things. And, and really, 
the carnal mind cannot understand the things of God. This is what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But it's only by the Spirit of God. And what we have here in the Word of God is that this manner of regeneration by the Spirit of God is such a tremendous thing that you and I have been brought into and we need to just pause and thank God for this new birth that he's given to us uh, through the word of God, by the spirit of God, all because of the grace of God. And what a thing for us to contemplate today. May the Lord bless you and may you be encouraged in his word and may you be anchored for life for his namesake.